in our South Asian region, besides sharing our clouds and monsoons, our birds and animals, our oceans and rivers, our flora and fauna, we also share long civilizational journeys, horizontally and vertically, on micro and macro levels. We share our pains and anguish too. We, the people of South Asia, are connected at a deeper level through different forms of articulation, through our shared myths, traditions, cosmologies, rituals that together constitute our cultural identity. When I look back, way back in 1986, the launching of a mad dream, catching that elusive golden sparrow called peace in a rather turbulent region through meeting of creative and sensitive minds seemed really mad to everybody in power. Whosoever I went begging for granting visas for writers from the neighboring countries. I launched my rickety boat in the turbulent sea with the writers conference in 1987 which became a historical milestone. Ever since, I never had time to look back. The endeavor grew into a full-fledged movement over the years with a push from the then Joint Secretary Sark Division in the Ministry of External Affairs, the visionary Ms. Meera Shankar in 1999. We also have a third eye with which we could see beyond SAR, in which seven countries were members. We could see the civilizational links which spread from Afghanistan to Myanmar. So we reached out in 1999 to writers and scholars of Afghanistan, and two poets from Afghanistan participated in the SARC Writers Conference in 2000, much before Afghanistan officially became part of SARC in 2007 as its eighth member. Foswal emerged as the first NGO working for Track 2 diplomacy in the specific area of culture for creating cultural connectivity through a think tank of intellectuals and writers, creative fraternity and peace activists, folklore, Buddhist, Sufi scholars, folk performers, painters and dancers, musicians and singers who have common sensitivities and common concerns for the socio-cultural, political, economic, tribal, gender issues of the region. Beginning with no funding totally, now since several years, limited funds from the Ministry of External Affairs are kindly given, though they are the bare minimum. But we are going ahead tirelessly. Major part of the expenses are looked after from the personal earnings of my painter daughter, Alpana Kaur. Our foundation has so far done 54 mega events during the last three decades, not only in India, but in all the neighboring countries as well. Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, including the very expensive Maldives and has translated and published 48 anthologies they are shown outside of the table of SAG fiction and poetry on our own to be given free to the delegates. The current South Asian Literature Festival is our 55th mega event. I take the proud privilege of welcoming our chief guest, Professor Chandrasekhar Kambar, eminent writer and president of Science Academy. We know speaker, eminent scholar, Professor Ashish Nandi, and the eminent personalities who are giving special addresses, Professor Mushkan Dubey, former Foreign Secretary, Mr. Payush Srivastava, Joint Secretary, SAC Division in the Ministry of External Affairs, and Buddha De Das Gupta Sari, Chief President. And our guests of honor, his Excellency Mr. Mohammed Khalilullah Azad, Chai Affairs of Afghanistan in India. 
His Excellency Mr. Sayyid Mazlam Ali, High Commissioner of Bangladesh in India. His Excellency Dr. V. Nam Gyal, Ambassador of Bhutan in India, the tallest man here. His Excellency Mr. Bharat Kumar Rehmi, Ambassador of Nepal. And then I extend my deepest gratitude to all of you, my writers, friends from the neighboring countries, including those of my country and also the dignitaries sitting on the dais. I apologize for the limited time given to the delegates presenting their favorite passages from their fiction and their poems. Actually, we never knew that we will be getting such overwhelming response and more than 190 delegates will be participating. Next year, I promise, it will be a five-day festival when everybody will get ample opportunity to present their brilliant ideas. If Ministry of External Affairs is with us, it could be early March 2019, a Sufi conference, and we will welcome you once more, the Foswell family, with open arms. Thank you. It is indeed an honor for me to be present among such a distinguished gathering of writers, poets, and artists from South for the South Asian Literature Festival. I congratulate FOSFAL for their untiring efforts and initiative in organizing this event. FOSFAL has been contributing towards cultural integration of South Asia for the last 30 years. I must admire the unbounded energy and enthusiasm of its president, Ms. Ajit Kaur, in this regard. In this workshop today, we must begin by asking some crucial questions about South Asian cultures and literatures. We are sibling countries, literary styles and even languages. Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Afghanistan. Because we have many commonalities as well as diversity, social ethos, political and historical experiences, The Bhakti movement all over India, in fact, focused on addressing the God directly, speaking to this God, or holding a dialogue with Him. This literature emerged out of the devotional community, and it's not to describe even the relationship with God in terms of human wants. I would like to end my talk with a few other random thoughts. How should Sark culture should uh, resist the onslaught of these neo-colonial forces. What kind of dialogue should we facilitate among the Sark culture today? No doubt translation will play an important role in bridging the linguistic gaps among us. Boys from many parts of the South Asia have gathered here. I hope to be part of the main discussions, debates and exchanges, exchange of ideas that are going to take place. I look forward to exploring issues like writing, culture, and identity in relation to the South Asian literature. Thank you. Uh, the organizers have been kind enough to give me half an hour, but I will not uh, strain your uh, patience. The civilization region has always a, is, a, is a mix of cultural entities. It is actually a confederation of cultures. There are different ways of looking at religions, and I propose that a much better way of looking at South Asia is to look at it not only as South Asia, but also as a cultural region. There, there are a number of nation states, each absolutely convinced that it is upholding values. which are unique to it. The principles of that guided of values, worldviews, visions, therefore a different set of complementaries arise at different points of time. One of the ways civilizations survive, and particularly this civilization has survived with its immense diversities, what, what I am called the South Asian uh, civilization. The polities which were in this part of the world were very different. Because in a civilization context, there is this modulation. But this society and this culture 
this civilization has allowed the different cultures to interact in a creative fashion to redefine the civilization over centuries. That's the clue to its survival. So South Asia in that sense, I would say, is incomplete without any of its complaints. I mean, I wish there were Pakistanis also had this conference, but that's a different story. I don't want to go into that at the moment. Many people uh, refer the name Bharat for India. The origin of the Bharat is not from Bharat of origin of Bharat is actually Arindam Chakravati told me this. He is from the Mahabharatic version of the story of Shakuntala. So thank you, Professor Nandi. It was a very, I would say, interesting and thought-provoking speech. I would not like to go into uh, how united we are in the realm of art and literature and culture in South Asia, how the poet of one country has inspired millions of young men and women of other countries. Uh, and I think that uh, even cultural cooperation should be pursued unilaterally. Uh, and therefore, it is extremely important that uh, such functions should be held from time to time. There is nothing called reciprocity in cultural cooperation. Uh, it is quite uh, sound ridiculous when you try reciprocity, that uh, I shall send my artist to your country only if you send your artist to my country. A group of poets and novelists uh, who are missing from this uh, gathering, it is uh, against our ethos, it is against uh, our philosophy and our own culture to try to avoid anyone. And I would like to quote uh, this very brief speech uh, with a uh, They would also come and will stand together. Thank you. First of all, let me just underline the fact that currently Indo-Bangladesh relationship is progressing very well. And I think the best relationship that exists between the two countries has been during the last four years. So the celebration, joint celebration of the two sides continues and at the same time our two high commissions in Dhaka and Delhi. And I think Mashkun Ambassador Dube has taken the initiative to promote him in this. The other area where we also cooperate is on the question of our celebration on the Omori Kushi as the International Mother Language Day. Books and literature provide a good insight and understanding uh, of a country and its people. While books on history, geography and politics provide useful inf information, works of literature including novels and poetry enhance our understanding of our nation's culture and tradition. Literature, after all, is an expression of culture, and culture, I believe, is the soul of a nation. Every country has its own culture, which may share similarities with the cultures of other countries, but some aspects of its culture will reflect its own distinctive character as a nation. By reading the books and literature of a country, we will always gain a better understanding of its people and their history and traditions. Ajit Korji has been bringing together writers from our region of South Asia for many years during the South Asian Literature Festival. I once again offer my deep appreciation to her for her initiative in promoting regional cooperation and understanding through literature. This in turn, I believe, will generate better understanding and goodwill among the nations of South Asia. I wish the South Asian Literature Festival much success. Thank you very much. Namaste, Namaskar, 
uh, let me first of all thank uh, Madam Ko uh, and the other the organizers for inviting me to speak a few words at the South Asian Literary Festival. Uh, actually, this is the second time I'm speaking, and this uh, literary festival is, uh, as we all know, is an important event in the cultural calendar of New Delhi. Uh, which provides a forum for eminent writers and literary experts to come together to celebrate the rich culture of the South Asian region. Today, although we come from different countries, divided by borders, we come together to celebrate literature which binds us as a region and beyond our borders. From time immemorial, we know that interactions have been taken place between our people, especially in our neighborhood, and which have influenced uh, and at the same time enriched our South Asian culture. This symbolic human language, we may call it so, in the form of literature, connects and converts thoughts to literary texts, short stories, poems, lyrics, which takes the human mind in a journey of reflection and at the same time explore, question and inspire human emotions. Culture is, I think, uh, speaks to our emotions and to our souls and that is very, very important in this day and age. Distinguished guests on the dais, eminent participants of South Asian countries, ladies and gentlemen, the title of my paper is The Dynamics of Literature in Bangladesh. Upholding the Bengali philosophy and values over generations, the people of East Bengal are now the citizens of an independent country. The independence we gained has made Bangla the national language of the country. Our independence has a long and rich history which was built over a long period of time with great sacrifices and was not bestowed on us in a short time. Galaxy of poets, writers and thinkers from all eight countries of Sark. Very good morning to everybody. Since the early 90s, slowly but steadily, Bhutanese writers have followed the zest for literature in the footsteps of the like of Amkin Zangchudin. While we are on a listing spree, we must not forget that we have had the book titled Homecoming, written by a 12-year-old girl, Pema Yudin. Poetry and poets bring out the sublime beauty of life, celebrating the splendor of genre of literature. 